Today we're going to be looking at another one of Chris Gazat's videos. Specifically, this black hole could be bigger than the universe. So where is it? In another universe? Or is this getting after that? Or is this about that whole, the entire universe is in a black hole? I don't know. Those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Foles. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's see what this is all about. You might be inside a black hole that's inside a black hole that's inside a black hole. Everything in existence could be black holes all the way down. Oh, it's like Inception. Or like Men in Black where the cat named Orion has a galaxy on its belt. It turns out black holes are much weirder than you think, and they break the universe much more <laughs> than is usually weird. explained destroying time and space, and they may actually create infinite universes in the process. But before we can get to that, let's first build a black hole out of- And presumably uncountable infinite as well, because you're not sure where to start because you just keep going deep, deep, deep down layers of black holes. It basically, it's just inception. Everything can become a black hole if you squeeze it to a critical limit. <laughs> You'd need to s I mean, I get what they're saying, but you need to find a way to prevent the guts of whatever you're squeezing from oozing out the sides. You have to basically compress everything together at once. Kind of like inertial confinement fusion, where you get extreme amounts of heat and pressure to induce fusion. Though that only works with really small nuclei, such as isotopes of hydrogen and helium. At least with man-made experience, man-made experiments. Stars can get some heavier stuff though. Squeeze Earth down to the size of a coin for it to turn into a black hole. The sun needs to be squeezed down to the size of a small city to become a black hole. <laughs> and if a lot of mass is concentrated in a really tiny space, you get... You see, that's just it. They're pushing in. The guts are squeezing out. You're not... There's all that mass that is escaping that you can't compress further. <laughs> it's a funny illustration, though. Something super dense. This is usually how black holes are explained. Stuff becomes super dense and collapses into a black hole. But actually, you don't need any ultra-dense stuff to make them. Not safe to strike. Unlike advertised, product recall, 12,023 flubber flying rub. What? <laughs> We're Did I miss something there? Someone might have to explain that one to me in the comments. I, I don't know what that ticker was. But all you really need to know is one thing. The larger black holes get, the less dense they are. So, really large black holes sure. are kind of thin. A sun mass black hole is only about six kilometers wide and has a density of about one Himalayan range per cubic meter. The supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way has a mass of four million suns, a diameter of 24 million kilometers, and a density of six blue whales per cubic meter. <laughs> I love these units of density. The ultramassive black hole Iris 2100-4156 has a mass of 3.8 billion suns and is as wide as the solar system. But because it's so large, it is only as dense as air. Good illustration of the square cube law being blown up to something this big. Interesting, you never think about it in terms of black holes. You usually think about it in terms of like building design or animals. Why certain animals can only get up, can only be so big. I think Kurt Skazad actually did a few discussions on that as well. This means, at least in theory, that if you take a gigantic balloon and fill it with undecillions of tons of air... Undecillions, huh? That's a lot. That's 10 to the 36th power. The moment it gets to the size of a solar system, an event horizon suddenly forms and it turns into a supermassive black hole without violence or squeezing. <laughs> oh, it's big enough. <laughs> it's only 350 million left. Now only 5 pi to the square root of infinity dollars. This is pretty silly. It also says it's environmentally friendly. So now, let's think big. What do we need to make a black hole the size of the universe? A universe-sized black hole. The chunk of the universe that we can see from Earth is a sphere with a radius of 45... Okay, so we're talking the observable universe. All right, that, that makes a bit more sense because if they're going to get into how the actual universe that's difficult to measure, because if the full universe is finite, we don't really know how to measure it since we can only see based on the speed of light and the 
current age of the universe. So this 45 billion light year radius universe, that's just the observable universe. Billion light years, filled with hundreds of billions of galaxies, lots of gas, and a bunch of other things. Sandwiches, the flat earth on top of a turtle. Uh, that's, that's pretty good. If you add them up, it has the mass of about a million billion billion suns. Which or about 10 to the 53 power kilograms. Which sounds a lot, but on average, the universe is not very dense. If we break up all the galaxies, stars, gas, and energy, and spread them equally inside the volume of the universe, we get an average density of about five hydrogen atoms per cubic meter. You can imagine this as the sort of ultra-thin cosmic air that makes up the universe. It's lighter than normal air, so you would float. <laughs> Those balloons would float. What would happen if we take a balloon as big as the observable universe and fill it with cosmic air? Well, this it turns out that all the mass in the observable universe is more than enough to create a black hole. Actually, it's enough to make a black hole ten times larger than the observable universe. Interesting. But that can only mean one thing. We should be living deep inside a truly gargantuan, cosmic-sized black hole. There's one catch, though. We know that our universe is expanding, and an expanding universe is not what you'd expect to see if you were inside a black hole. So our universe also wears the event horizon and the singularity of the universe. There's no there's no converging aspect of this like like it is based on what we, like it is with the black hole. Everything like this that is expanding. Not be a black hole, at least not in the naive way we've just described. Except there's a wild and mind-bending trick the universe could play on us. <laughs> the one and only black hole universe. They're doing it from a guise of selling a bizarre product. To find out how, let's jump into a black hole and die. A whole universe born inside a black hole. I don't know though, how do they account for our interpretation of the cosmic background radiation? Since it's largely uniform and isotropic, just in the way it explains the Big Bang Theory. There's no evidence of it, of the universe convalescing down to a singularity. We usually imagine black holes as spheres with a singularity at their center, a point where all their mass is concentrated so much that our maths breaks down. And one more thing, uh, just on the subject of math and thermodynamics, if the universe was in a black hole, so black holes are associated with being in high entropy states, and the second law of thermodynamics states that entropy is increasing. Though, if this universe was born with in a black hole in already high entropy state, so entropy is continually increasing inside of the black hole universe. And our current understanding is the universe began in a low entropy state. Now, that could just mean that entropy was has always been higher and it's the total amount is far higher in the universe. And what we thought was low entropy was really higher than we initially thought. I don't know. If you're curious, I'll pin down a comment in a video that would go into way more detail about entropy. But the short version, during the Big Bang, the universe was in an extremely hot and extremely dense state, which is associated with low entropy because despite the high energy, it was fairly orderly and uniform. There were no complex structures like stars or galaxies or planets. Then it underwent a rapid expansion period, the inflationary period, and then as things cooled, more complex elements form, galaxies form, stars, planets, all driven by gravity, and all of these processes gradually increase entropy over time. And black holes, being a very extreme case of this, formed by dying stars, greatly increase the entropy of the universe as more complex structures form and then spread out with the universe expanding. So, while it is possible that maybe our baseline entropy was much higher than we thought, this is this idea would turn the second law of thermodynamics on its head. But this is a lie. They are so much weirder. From the outside, a black hole looks like a normal black sphere, but the inside is where things stop making sense. <laughs> black holes warp the universe so much that at the event horizon, space and time switch their roles. Inside a normal it's actually pretty funny. sphere, space is finite, but time goes on forever. But inside a black hole, it's the other way around. Space goes on forever, but time is finite. 
so once inside, you see an infinite yeah. universe with no center. The geometry is too complicated, so we're simplifying. But basically, you could walk forever in one direction, or walk in another direction and arrive at the same place again. So they're saying this is like one of those warping levels in Star Fox, hence they put the R-Wing there. Okay. <laughs> that is playing a trick on you. Still not sure what that has to do. I still have the problem with the whole entropy thing, but let's keep going. But not only that, inside a black hole time is finite and it's now running out. So after a while, you start to notice that space itself is slowly changing. In one direction, space is being stretched, while in all other directions, space is shrinking. The whole universe is being squeezed, kind of turning into a collapsing spaghetti. Sooner or later, the whole black hole universe collapses into itself. Yes, yeah, so this is all pointing, and none of this is happening, so... <laughs> all of space, every single part of it, is turning into a singularity. So the singularity of a black hole is not at its center or in any direction at all. It's in the future of whatever falls inside. We made a whole video about this if you want to learn more. I mean, one thing this theory does have going for it is it gets around the initial singularity problem with the, bang, the Big Bang Theory. Just say, hey, it, it was another universe. But in that case, it's like they said, it's universes and black holes all the way down and you're talking about entropy increases within within your system boundaries but okay this this is interesting this is kind of this is making me scratch my head a bit but singularities being a bridge that's a little that's out there but interesting i can certainly understand the philosophical appeal behind it a potentially infinite hierarchy of universes. I think it aligns with a few ideas around the very nature of existence itself. So it sounds cool, but I don't even know how to prove it one way or the other. <laughs> so the singularity is not a place where you can go. It's an event in time that happens. Once it happens, you and everything else that fell inside the black hole is it an event in time or is it just, you know, a transitional period? Well, I guess a transitional period could be viewed as a time if you're in a black hole. So I guess we are kind of saying the same thing. Okay. ...will be mercilessly crushed into an infinitely small region <laughs> with infinite gravity and infinite energy. Time, space, none of it matters anymore. Both kind of stop existing in ways that we would recognize. And then, is this the end? Well, maybe not. This collapse of the black hole universe into a singularity looks like one of the scenarios for the end of our universe, the Big Crunch. It was also one of the scenarios for the beginning with the Big Bang. I think they're getting, yeah. Where long after the Big Bang, the whole universe collapses into a singularity again. But if there's a Big Crunch, there might be a big bounce, like a rubber ball that you've squeezed too bounce. much and that suddenly rebounds, <laughs> space might expand again so a new universe could be born inside a black hole. Now that's an idea that would give you an enhancement over, well, basically if you thought inertial confinement fusion is hard to pull off, it still is. But doing that with the whole universe and absorbing energy from universes contracting and expanding. So I guess you would be existing in a some sort of hyperspace, hyper-universe realm outside of this universe completely gaining energy from, from these universes. I'm sure somebody's written a sci-fi book on something like this, but <laughs> it's a similar enough principle anyway. The funny thing about this scenario is that nothing has changed in the slightest outside the black hole. Watching from the outside, it's still a black sphere of nothingness. And yet, on the inside, a new universe has been born. Now I see what they're getting at with it just depends how you sell what a black hole is by them poisoning the, uh, as a guise of these black hole salesmen. All right, I get it now. I'm sure some of you got this much earlier than I did while watching this, but thank you very much for your patience. <laughs> so maybe our universe was born like this and we are all actually inside a black hole. But if our universe can also create black holes, they might give birth to new universes. And here's where we get the cool philosophical hierarchy of universes. Is our black hole universe also just part also of the universe further up that's also a black hole inside another universe? Is there an end to it? Is there one original universe? Is the cosmos black holes inside black holes inside black holes? Or is it a loop? Does it somehow he does it somehow loop all the way around? <laughs> Suppose eventually you might find one that looks similar enough. Infinite black hole universes. 
if the universe cre now that's a fun product for these guys to sell <laughs> creates black holes that create universes that then create new black holes that create new universes this cosmic self-reproduction would be subject to natural selection a big bang is a chaotic and messy event so it's possible that the new daughter universes would not always be fully identical to their mums. Donut Earth. It's also possible some of these universes might not last very long. Like, depending on how their Big Bang lat, it could, like, blow the universe so far out completely that complex life would never develop on it, that it just goes straight from Big Bang to effectively Big Freeze within a few million years or so or the other extreme where it's such a weak big bang that it just collapses back in on itself within a very short period of time not the uh, billions of years required to evolve complex life so it's possible a lot of these black hole universes could be duds i guess sometimes physics may be slightly different with some fundamental values higher <laughs> mm, donut universe bet that one tastes good or lower and so some universes might be able to create loads of stars, planets, and black holes. Others might not, maybe creating a uniform cosmic soup where no stars, planets, and That's black not holes fall. Black hole uh, donut universe sounds more appetizing than cosmic soup. But if all universes are born inside black holes, in the long run, all universe lines that don't create loads of black holes would die out. The universes with the conditions for loads of black holes would become the most common and spawn the most daughter universes. Basically a family tree and black holes are your fertility metric? Interesting. And then supposedly you have ones that have advanced civilizations that develop that can form black holes and effectively create their own universes. This is getting weird, but I'm sure someone's written a sci-fi book on that subject too. Survival of the fittest, but with universes instead of organisms. Our observable universe alone has this created awesome. at least 10 to the power of 17 black holes so far. So maybe our universe has the physics and laws it has because it was born after a long process of cosmological selection that favored the production of tons of black holes. And that would have a lovely side effect. If universes are optimized to create <laughs> as many new black hole universes as possible, they're optimized to create loads of galaxies and stars. And thereby also, by accident, the conditions for life to emerge. <laughs> Everything's a donut in this universe. That's awesome. <laughs> so universes that are the best at creating new universes are also the best at creating life. If this scenario is true, who knows how many bazillions of black hole universes bazillions. might be out there. All with stars and planets potentially home to others like us. So, is our universe like this? The truth is we don't know. While these ideas are based on real science and work on paper, they're speculative and not testable. Yeah, and this seems more like this This past couple of minutes, while I very much enjoyed it, I think it is more of a philosophical exercise than a true scientific one that involves testing and evaluation of results, repeated results that you could even test anything like this. We just, we just don't really know how to do that yet. I'm, I'm enjoying the philosophy. <laughs> Also, the cyclic universes don't actually explain why the universe exists in the first place or why it is the way it is. Instead of providing answers, the I guess we could eventually, if we could travel in black holes at some point, maybe figure this out or at least see how common this is. Because would it really be every black hole, even those little micro black holes that don't last very long in our time span, but have something that lasts in a much longer time span? deeply nested, but is created and eradicated in an instant relative to our timeline. Weird. These are really just new questions in disguise, so keep that in mind before getting too excited. But isn't it just wonderful and heartwarming that we're living in a universe where ideas as big as this one <laughs> are even thinkable? There might be so much life. And if new universes are created constantly, maybe life will go on forever. Life going on forever, possibly the cost of other lives being used to make black holes, but either way. That was really cool, really deep, both in terms of scientific and philosophical stuff. I wasn't really expecting that, but I really enjoyed this video. I know I see a lot of comments on Kurtz Gazat videos saying my daily dose of existential dread. But this one I didn't really see as dread, I just thought it as an interesting thought experiment. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.